Welcome to the Postal Iceberg, a delve into the hidden tidbits of the Postal Universe. As we continue to flesh out the lore and dive deeper into the frigid waters, some of the topics and information covered may be disturbing or distressing. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's begin. Exploding Marching Band during Tuesday, the marching band is performing around the town. Eventually, the march is brought to a halt. Library Taliban During Tuesday, you can find a single Taliban member hanging around in the terrorist handbook and pornography section. 69 Coin In Paradise Lost, there is a vendor that appears in the train yard marketplace on Wednesday. The stall, aptly named, shit you don't need, but probably want, will sell you a coin with a 69 printed on its face. And there you go. Thank you. Okay. The coin appears to have zero use, outside of being a reference to Fallout New Vegas. Diamond Ore Deep in the Coleman Mines, during Paradise Lost, there is a small patch of the wall that appears to be the same as the Diamond Ore from Minecraft. Falling Container Outside the mall, there is a small fence blocking the player's access to an out-of-bounds area. You could use the cars to easily jump over this fence, causing this to happen. Water physics. Now the flowers will grow. Any body of water tends to act quite strangely when urinated into. Civvy's Crack Shack. With prolific coverage of the Postal franchise, it was only a matter of time before CV-11 appeared in one of their games, and Postal 4 was it. Don't make me call the cops! An entire store to sell health pipes and merch from. Postal 4 has yet another nod to CV-11's running Sue account gag, by including it wholesale. Lesbians in Paradise Lost in Paradise Lost, there is a room where two women are kissing in a quite cartoonish manner. <sighs> Clowns and the Antagonist By entering My Name Is Not Important when playing Redux, you unlock the clown costume as well as Not Important from Hatred. So weak. In addition to that, there are also clowns that will fill in as AI teammates during cooperative play. Box Launcher The Box Launcher is a weapon that appears during Enhanced Mode, Postal 2's version of New Game Plus. Dopefish Lives Dopefish is a character designed by Tom Hall for Commander Keen 4. It has become an industry in-joke to have it appear as an easter egg. Half-Life 2 Episode 2 Gnome In Half-Life Episode 2, there is an achievement for carrying the Garden Gnome from the start of the game to the rocket ship at the end. A particularly tough task, as transporting the Gnome with the muscle car is notoriously difficult. In Postal 4, there is a Gnome in the sewer next to a spray-painted smiley face with a striking resemblance to the Lombarda symbol from Half-Life. Holiday Events During many holidays throughout the year, corresponding events appear in Postal 2. Enjoy the kissing booth on Valentine's Day, hunt for the leprechaun's pot of gold on St. Patrick's, and fight the Easter Bunny during Easter. There's even a microtransaction store that appears on April Fools. Mike J's Piss Dance Mike J appears in the in-game Running With Scissors office in Postal 2. Hey, Vince is in his office, you better go see him. Thanks. If the player urinates on them, Mike J will dance. Are you peeing on me? What do you think you are, R. Kelly? In real life as well, according to the man himself. Beta Shotgun This shotgun appears in Postal 2 and is modeled after the Frankie Spaz-12 combat shotgun. It got as far as the beta before being scrapped for a weaker variety. As it still existed in Postal 2's game files, it would be repurposed for Eternal Damnation, even having a very unique reload animation. Eventually, everything would come full circle as some of the mod's new weapons were ported into Postal 2, including the beta shotgun, though it still uses John Murray's hands. 
Peaceful Errands Every errand in Postal 2 can be completed without violence, though many with increasing adversity testing the player's patience. Ultimately, this is the crux that Postal rests on. Despite incentives, there is no requirement to kill anyone in the game, and it's only as violent as the player chooses. Shit Donut Food serves to heal the player in Postal 2, and while they are the food to restore the smallest amount of hit points, donuts are the most common. Many of these donuts appear in the Seventh Heaven food store, but only one is unique. This one is a dog duty, and despite causing an understandable reaction from Dude, it still heals for one HP. <laughs> Mm, that stuff really works. Classic outfit in Postal 4. In Postal 4, you can obtain Dude's iconic fit. This wasn't possible in earlier builds of the game, but there was a nod to Dude's original outfit in the antique shop. Sword Off Shotgun in Paradise Lost. The Sword Off Shotgun is one of the most powerful weapons in Postal 2. That's the one. While its location is fairly common knowledge, it makes a far less known appearance in Paradise Lost. Only one location, on Wednesday and Thursday. The Pigeon Hunter mission was going to be real. I'm promoting you to Chief Pigeon Relocation Engineer. Here's your rocket launcher. Don't abuse it now. Sweet. The fated Pigeon Hunter mission from Apocalypse Weekend was slated to be a real mission. The in-game video of Vince Desi explaining the lack of funding, while shot for comedic effect, was the truth. Proposal for the Pigeon Mission? We, we ain't got no budget for Pigeon Missions! Look at the quality of this video! You want my luck? Enough! AK-47 refers to this iconic clip where a reporter at E3 is commenting on an advertisement for Postal 1 and states, The wall poster of the big E3 computer game show in Atlanta bears the unmistakable image of an AK-47 rifle. Ha ha, snowman. When Paradise Lost was launched, an exploit was found that allowed you to skip most of the Lucky Ganesh mission. There was a small, unintended gap in the snow that blocks the front entrance that you can squeeze through, causing you to skip the entire underground gimp section. An update to the game amended this skip. While you can still enter the same way, exiting becomes impossible as a snowman blocks the gap, holding up a sign that simply reads, Ha ha. Unused voice lines. There is a number of unused voice lines for Postal Dude that never made the final cut of the game. Most are fairly unremarkable. Buckwheat. But one in particular stands out to me. Evil must die. Vegans in Postal 2. Vegans were originally going to appear in Postal 2, in much the same way as the Parents for Decency do, picketing the Running With Scissors office. While the protesters were scrapped from the game, they do appear as such in Apocalypse Weekend. He's assaulting those poor cows! Somebody call Pamela Anderson! This one's for all the oppressed McNuggets! Gonorrhea Skip One of the tasks on Friday is to find a cure for your gonorrhea. Oh, I definitely need to get this looked at. As Postal Dude only finds out about the STD from a burning sensation when he pees, it is skippable if the player does not urinate in the game on Friday. Paradise Lost Dinosaur On Monday, inside the Creature Control Center and Pets, there is a secret area that houses a Velociraptor. Clever girl. Skeleton Hunt There is an arcade machine in Paradise Lost titled Skeleton Hunt. If the player waits in front of it, it will spawn a hostile skeleton that will attack. Dude Scratch Temp dot wave. This refers to an audio file, which is a rough take of the Postal Dude's lines before they were professionally recorded by Rick Hunter. Arr, I knew I shouldn't have smoked that crap. Ugh, I knew I shouldn't have smoked that crap. During production, studios will often use placeholder sound effects and voiceover until the recordings are finalized. Fraud Hogslop survived Apocalypse Weekend. Based on the real-life CEO of Whiptail Interactive, Fraud Hogslop is one of the bosses you fight during Apocalypse Weekend. Hey, Vince sent me to pick up the Gold Master. Gold what? Hey man, there's no Gold Master here. There's not a Gold Master within 100 miles. 
Vince is just crazy and insane. Vince never returns my calls. Mr. Ho uh, Mr. Desi is on line two. I can't even get a call out of that guy, eh? Mr. Desi is still holding on line one. Or a gold master, which I do not have right here on my desk, nope. <sighs> okay, we can do this the fun way. Security! Shit. However, he makes an appearance on Friday during Paradise Lost, having apparently survived the apocalypse, and can be fought as a mini-boss of sorts. I'm not even armed, eh? Test subtitle spam dot fuck. There is a map with this title that exists as a sort of debug room. I better get out of here. Fascinating. Fascinating. Censored achievements. Some of the postal achievements were censored for Steam. For instance, the achievement, See You Next Tuesday, can be seen partially obscured, but in-game has the full version. Music to Go Postal Buy. Released in 2006, Music to Go Postal Buy was an album consisting of 14 tracks by independent artists. Running with Scissors sold physical copies of the album on their website, and in 2022, Part 2 would be released to coincide with Postal 4. Eternal Damnation. Eternal Damnation is a total conversion mod for Postal 2. Released in 2006 by Resurrection Studios, it features a twisting plot filled with zombies, demons, and the holy water of Lazarus, of all things. A lot of its themes and some of the topics it touches on are generally a lot darker and more graphic than your average postal experience, so play at your own discretion. Hammer Weapon There is a normal, household hammer that appears as a weapon in Internal Damnation and Paradise Lost. An odd case, as an untextured axe is overlaid on the weapon when you strike someone. Postal One Dude's Original Appearance The original dude had a fairly stark difference to the way he looked. While the outfit isn't too dissimilar, still equipped with the familiar trench coat, his hair is longer, he sports fingerless gloves, and generally has a younger, more helpless look. Virgin Seeds <sighs> Konami Code The Konami Code is a simple input intended to make a game easier, most well known for granting the player 30 extra lives in Contra for the NES in 1988, though it originated two years prior at the hands of Kazuhisa Hashimoto. Hashimoto was tasked with porting Gradius from the arcade to the NES in 1986. Struggling with the game's difficulty, he designed a cheat code for himself to use. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, DS, the code works in many games and was adopted by Postal as well, allowing the player to craft custom difficulty settings. Bigfoot Spotted in Paradise On the police notice board, there are several posts, one of which is a claim that Bigfoot has been seen around Paradise. During a very Postal Christmas, you can actually find a Yeti out in the snow. Linux Achievement in 2013, achievements were added to the game, though one was apparently removed due to causing issues. The game's files revealed the achievement to be titled Mr. Postal's Penguins, awarded for playing the Linux version of the game. Elephant Foot Waste Basket In Apocalypse Weekend, one of the missions tasks you with killing 21 elephants. Roscoe wants to repurpose them for a range of themed novelties, including an elephant foot waste basket. The kids love them! You can then find one in Paradise Lost. The PU Games office contains one, next to the desk of the CEO. Postal 1 Japanese Levels In the Japanese release of Postal 1, Super Postal, there was two bonus levels not in the base game, one being Tokyo, and the other being Osaka. Both of the level intros are done in the style of a haiku. John Murray in Paradise Lost. The main character of Eternal Damnation makes an appearance inside the asylum of Paradise Lost. He appears on Wednesday, worshipping the AC unit Postal Dude intends to retrieve. Die. Cock Asian reopens on Friday in Paradise Lost. 
Cock Asian has its grand reopening on Monday, just prior to the zombie outbreak, and then the restaurant closes for the rest of the week. On Friday, however, they have a grand re-reopening, and if you go into the preparation area, you can see they have switched meat sauces from dog to zombie. Bookcase Grave. In Paradise Lost, there is a secret exit in the PU Games office behind a bookshelf that no longer operates the way it used to. There is a grave to mark its demise. Urinating on the grave causes the bookshelf to rise up and physically attack you. Postel 2. Smell the Pain. In 2003, Postel 2 Share the Pain was released. An expansion that added multiplayer modes and two new areas to the base game. In Apocalypse Weekend, the game studio Bullfish Interactive is selling a knockoff version of the same expansion called Postel 2 Smell the Pain. Brian survived. If you play through Apocalypse Weekend, the end screen shows all of your stats, one of which is titled Brian Survived. Brian is a credited Running With Scissors employee that stands on Vince's roof on the start of Sunday. Mugger Priest. On Monday, there is a priest that wanders the streets of paradise and robs people for their money. The developers had originally planned for the priest to rob the player, but that too hit the cutting room floor. Nuke Launcher. Deep within Tora Bora, after fighting waves upon waves of enemies, you come across Osama Bin Laden. If you do this on Friday, the weapon of mass destruction is instead replaced with a mini nuke launcher. The difference in power between these two weapons is quite substantial. Postal 3 Shrine In the PU Games office in Paradise Lost, there is a hidden secret behind a bookcase. Inside is what appears to be a shrine to Postal 3, which has this attached dialogue. What the hell is this shit? I don't know, but it looks pretty cool to me. Trolley Physics The clinic during the week is wrought with gurneys. They tend to slide and topple over when moved or kicked. The physics were changed so that the player could more easily utilize them as a weapon. This is shown as part of the original Apocalypse Weekend trailer. The reason they still differ between the week and the weekend is that the hospital bed assets were replaced entirely, instead of being modified directly. More graves appear every day. Throughout the week, the graveyard becomes more and more populated with graves. This occurs regardless of whether you choose violence, meaning the deaths occur unrelated to the player. The I Regret Nothing Podcast Running With Scissors has an official podcast for all things postal, hosted by Mike J, Pedro, and Matt. They appear to be including a type of ARG in the most recent episodes. Um, you know, it's very annoying that I, I just don't, I don't understand why people play that crap. Yeah, I mean... VR Easter Egg In the original Paradise Mall, there used to be stores labelled as opening in 2016. 13 years after the game was released, the stores were patched. It is now accessible via a Terminator 2 reference. Inside, you can find a virtual reality headset that transports you to the Steam store. This contains many game titles, including Dude 4 and Suka Strike Global Bliet. There is another game that appears on these shelves, but that will be covered later. You can also purchase your own copy of Postal Redux while here, before leaving via a Back to the Future reference. Postal 3 Victim In Paradise Lost, there is a locked house. Breaking and entering through the window, you can find someone that was playing Postal 3. Postal 3 is constantly lambasted, not only by the fans of the series, but also by running with scissors themselves. Dude's original house. Postal Dude was originally going to live in a house instead of the mobile home that we see in Postal 2. It can be seen here in the beta footage, fairly far into development, but was eventually cut. Bridge Robbery. In Paradise Lost, a man is being assaulted underneath a bridge. Nailed to a tree behind the old police station is a poster an advertisement for lessons in thievery with instructions to bring money to the very same bridge. 
Tora Bora. Postal 2, Share the Pain, added a secret location behind the dude's trailer. Hidden behind a bush is a drain pipe that leads to the obligatory sewer complex. Continuing through eventually finds you at Tora Bora. In the real world, Tora Bora was the cave complex located in the Spingar mountain range in eastern Afghanistan, the suspected hideout of Osama bin Laden. Rare Ending Summaries After completing the game, a campaign summary is shown. There is a variety of different titles granted to the player depending on what transpired during the game. The Mall Overlaps Itself the mall is split into two wings, each section being contained in its own loading screen. Looking at the maps from above and overlaying them reveals that the interiors extend far further than the exterior walls display. The mall is non-Euclidean, it's bigger on the inside. Postal 3 Rickroll On the official Running With Scissors website, all of the postal games and more are listed on the drop-down menus, even Postal 3. Saw Bathroom in Eternal Damnation. The bathroom from the 2004 movie Saw is faithfully recreated in a secret in Eternal Damnation, even playing a short cutscene when you enter the area. Fart Gun The fart gun is a weapon that was exclusive to the pre-ordered version of Postal 3. If that wasn't rare enough, it was only available to the Russian version, though it has since been unlocked to the rest of the globe with mods. Gary vs. Crotchy on Friday, there is a secret arena with Gary Coleman fighting Crotchy. Both spawn and combat each other endlessly, and finding it will net you a secret achievement. As you can bribe Crotchy with a copy of Coleman's book earlier in the week, it would seem that either Crotchy has premeditated plans for the former child star, or was a fan, and didn't believe the old adage of, never meet your heroes. Real Champ Champ the Dog, who appears in numerous postal titles, is based on Vince Desi's real pet by the same name. This is Champ Video, Champ Video time! A Pitbull Terrier who was arrested, but was found innocent by a Pima County courtroom. Sadly, after an eight month long battle with cancer, Champ passed away on the 23rd of May 2011, two days before his 12th birthday. Rest in peace. Postal X When Postal hit its 10 year anniversary, Running With Scissors released Postal X. It contained most everything released up until that point, as well as three unofficial mods, Eternal Damnation, A Week in Paradise, and Very Postal Christmas. On top of all that, maps, videos, a trailer for the upcoming movie, and individually numbered Crotchy O's cereal boxes. Of the 2500 that were made, one contained a golden ticket the recipient of which was invited to join Running With Scissors for a Christmas party. A Week in Paradise removed content. A Week in Paradise was another Postal 2 mod made by Resurrection Studios that combined the base week and Apocalypse Weekend into a single unified campaign. It was also bundled with some user content, items from Mad Jackal, as well as new difficulty levels and additional gore. <laughs> With so much positive feedback for the bundle, Running With Scissors gave A Week in Paradise an official release, which included every postal game up to that point, as well as Eternal Damnation. However, when it was ported to Steam, a number of features were removed, including the custom items, the deplorable arcade machines, and the school map. Paradise Lost Photo is real. This picture in Paradise Lost of Dude with his dog is based off of a real photograph of Vince Desi with Champ. Postal 3 Impossible Achievements Some of the Postal 3 achievements were impossible to finish, some noting that anything beyond 94% is not possible within the limits of the game. While some achievements were not impossible, they were bugged and difficult far beyond intention. The Real American achievement, for instance, asks you to kill 235 terrorists, but doing so doesn't increase the counter. The only way to get credit is to kill the meth-crazed Rhino, one of the game's boss fights. Achievement guides have circumvented this by instructing the players to quick save right before scoring the kill, and then reload the save 235 times. 
Vince Desi's original Postal Movie vision. The Postal Movie was helmed by Uwe Boll, one of the most notorious directors in the world, renowned for his terrible film quality and open disdain for audiences and critics alike. Boll was contacted by the German Postal Fan Club about making the movie. Vince Desi, in Boll's own words, always goes for the quick buck and agreed to sell the rights to the franchise on the condition that he be involved in its creation. Not only supportive, but he will work on um, on the script and everything. And then he and Steve Wick developed their own script, and the the script was basically like a taxi driver, uh, like a harsh, brutal rampage movie. And and I said no, I cannot do that. I I want uh, to make a comedy out of Postal. Instead, Boll took the film in the direction we got today hitting the crass and goofy notes of Postal 2's satire, while also serving as a giant personal middle finger from Boll to every detractor he could think of. But I felt like this is now the moment to, to make a movie where I have my personal revenge with my fans, with the Boll haters, with myself, with the whole political uh, people around me, with... Uh, uh, with basically everything, with the world. So this would be like my revenge to to everybody, to the Hollywood system, uh, and um, of course to Bush, Bin Laden, and everybody who works on destroying the Earth in the last eight years. In a bizarre twist of fate, two years after the Postal movie was made, Uwe Boll would direct another film literally titled Rampage. It's about a man being fed up with the world and going on a killing spree. Suicide in the Paradise Lost Bathroom. Mother never loved me! Cow sex doll. There is a blow up doll with a cow's head in the farmer's bed. Corkscrew Rules. Corkscrew Rules is a Russian expansion pack for Postal 2. It was developed by Avalon Style Entertainment and published by Akella, who were also the company primarily responsible for Postal 3. It is riddled with bugs, has terrible game design, as well as overt racism, homophobia, ableism, far beyond anything close to Postal 2. It was only localized in one country outside of Russia, and the localization has the Russian voices dubbed over, but in English. I don't even know your no name, only that Dumbas nickname. Smoking weed. While not as straightforward as the health pipe, if you come across a bushel of the devil's lettuce and throw a match on it, the resulting smoke will increase your HP all the way up to 200. Funnily enough, while your health is boosted to 200, it will be reduced back down to 125 by using a health pipe. Where is the love music video? In 2003, the Black Eyed Peas released their mega smash hit, Where is the Love? Included in the music video was footage of children playing Postal 2. They're sat on the floor in front of a TV, which may imply the game is on console, despite only ever being released on PC. Mobile only postal games. There exists games in the postal series that are exclusive to mobile phones. Postal Babes, for instance, is a side scroller where you control one of the aforementioned babes, as well as a GTA 1 style top down postal game. Full playthroughs of these games exist on YouTube and look excruciating. Postal 1 was also ported to Android, and you can buy it from the Running With Scissors website for $1. USPS Lawsuit After Postal was released in 1997, the United States Postal Service attempted to sue Running With Scissors, specifically for being an erroneous and unfair portrayal of the nation's postal employees, amongst other claims. The details of the lawsuit are beyond the scope of this iceberg. If you want to see a full video on the topic, let me know in the comments. Postal 1 and 2 are connected. While there are many motifs that follow on directly between the games, they are apparently unrelated. That does little to stem the tide of theories though, that range from Postal 1 being the father of the Postal 2 dude, or both dudes being the same person. And my personal favourite, the Running With Scissors studio inside Postal 2 was making a game, and that game is Postal 1. Multiple Dude Theory A theory exists that the Postal Dude is more than a single entity, the ending of Postal 1's co-op campaign displays multiple dudes approaching what appears to be the same barred door from the single player campaign's final cutscene. The outskirts level in Postal Redux looks to include more than a single dude. The roster selection screen in Postal 2's multiplayer mode shows Team Dude with the following tagline. Surprisingly, they're not related. They all just happen to have the same brooding, disaffected, individualistic sense of style. During Thursday, when collecting stakes, Dude makes a similar mention. I need some steaks for the Psychotic Friends Network barbecue. 
There are many pieces to this theory, but fitting them together is the challenging part. Demon. In Postal 1, there is a theory that Dude is possessed by a demon, as suggested by the naming convention in the game's files. In the map editor, Dude will remain silent unless this demon entity is placed on the map. This theory also extends to Postal Brain Damaged, as an alternate version of the Dude appears, and is voiced by Rick Hunter in a similar fashion. Dead Baby. In the credit art for the original Postal, there appears to be a baby in the pile of corpses. Whether the original inclusion was intentional or not, it was altered in the Redux version of the same art. CEO of Running With Scissors Vince Desi has said before that violence against children is one of the lines they refuse to ever cross. The Postal movie makes this statement a little ironic. Call of Pahom. The most bizarre inclusion in the Steam store is a game titled Call of Pahom, a fictional title that is based on the 1999 Russian psychedelic exploitation horror film of all things, titled The Green Elephant. The silhouette that appears on the cover is of a particularly vile scene where a prisoner defecates on a plate, smearing much of it on himself and then offers it to his cellmate. I have no idea what the connection is between Running With Scissors and this movie. Dude is a pedophile. There were several posters made up to advertise the original postal. These fed into the controversy of the game, and really sought to drive home the psychotic nature of the main character. One of these promo images showed a young woman, presumably on a live news broadcast, with the quote, we started dating three weeks ago. He seems so happy. The same woman appears in another piece, in an obituary of sorts, which displays her age and status as a student. To blur the lines of truth and reality even further, there is yet another promo that features her in the same situation, but with a different quote. It was so weird. He told everyone I was his girlfriend, but I only met him once. It seems likely that given the prominence of the image used, it may have been an unfortunate oversight, 